Hey there folks, Uncle Troy here, and this is not going to be one of the fun and games video. This is going to be a very serious video. So if you're looking for fun and games or you're one of the younger, uh, less mature uh, viewers, just click away now and then don't complain to me later that you came here looking for fun and games and got brought down. So, uh, short version is this is the first video in a new playlist called The C Word, which is going to chronicle my uh, battle with cancer. I have recently been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer, and, uh, well, basically this is what's going to kill me, they tell me. Uh, for years they were telling me that my diabetes would kill me, but now they're saying that cancer is what's going to kill me. So, of course, they told me diabetes was going to kill me 20 years ago, and I'm still around making these videos. So, let's hope the same for the cancer. Uh, but we're going to talk today about the background, how I came to be diagnosed with cancer, and uh, where we're going to go from there. Um, what happened was about maybe 10 years ago, I noticed some uh, burning, itching, irritation of my uh, my butthole, basically, my anus, and I brought it to the attention of my doctor at the time, a family, uh, family practice, you know, primary care physician, and they said, oh, that sounds like hemorrhoids, and what have you been doing for it? Well, nothing, you know, I've just been, you know, been suffering. They said, well, check with your uh, pharmacist, see if they got some over-the-counter uh, things. In fact, I ended up going with uh, what's called Tux medicated pads, which if you have any irritation of your anus, this is good stuff, it includes witch hazel, which helps soothe inflamed tissues. And uh, so, you know, I tried a little preparation H, I tried a little Tux medicated pad, seems to take care of the, uh, the symptoms, and we went on. And so every so often the doctor would ask me how my hemorrhoids were doing. I'd say, well, you know, a little itchy, a little irritated that day, or maybe there's a little bright red blood on the toilet paper. Well, that's to be expected with hemorrhoids. Don't worry about it. And then we went, and I couldn't go to that doctor anymore because a place I worked with every uh, year or so would uh, renegotiate the insurance coverage with uh, the various providers to give me the best possible coverage for the lowest possible amount of money. And that would usually involve the class of doctors that I was going to one year would not be the same group of doctors I could go to the other another year. So I would not end up going to the same doctor more than a year at a time. And so, you know, when you uh, sign up for the new doctor, they have you fill out a, a sheet of paper saying all the previous illnesses, diseases, whatever you've had. And they would include, you know, include hemorrhoids. And they'd say, what about this hemorrhoids? And I'd say, well, I got a little burning itching every now and again, uh, a little blood, bright red blood in the toilet paper once in a while. And, well, that's consistent with hemorrhoids. Now tell me about your diabetes. Because the doctors were always more concerned with my diabetes, which had no symptoms as far as I was concerned. It was just a bunch of lab work saying you have diabetes. And I was taking a whole bunch of medicine for it uh, that, you know, I didn't, I couldn't see it was doing any good because the only evidence I had of diabetes was doctors telling me I had diabetes. I mean, and I know I have diabetes. It's just, you know, up here. But here in the, in the heart, you know, in the gut, it's uh, hard to take seriously an illness that has no symptoms. But I would uh, go to the doctors. And they'd be more concerned with my diabetes. And I actually had one tell me you have, you know, when I complain about the bright red blood on the toilet paper, uh, would say, well, you have to have hemorrhoids. That's going to happen from time to time. You don't need to tell me every time you have a bowel movement. So I pretty much stopped telling doctors about the hemorrhoids. And uh, that went on for, like I said, about 10 years. And then uh, I had noticed at some point that I was having a little uh, blood in my stool, a little noticeable pink in the bowl which is more than just a few drops of bright red blood on the toilet paper. So I brought that to the attention of my then primary care physician, who agreed with everyone else that this was uh, consistent with a diagnosis of hemorrhoids. But if I wanted to be checked out anyway, even though she didn't think it was anything serious, if I wanted to be checked out anyway, uh, it could send me to a GI specialist, gastroenterologist. Uh, G for gastro, I for intestinal. Basically everything from your mouth to the other end, uh, they check it out. And so I went to the gastroenterologist who agreed this was probably hemorrhoids and nothing to be concerned about, but joked with me that he makes all his money doing procedures. And if uh, I wanted a colonoscopy, that he would be happy to give me one. So I had one. And if you've a uh, regular watcher of this channel, regular viewer, you'll know I put a 20 minute uh, video out on preparing for the colonoscopy. I never did a video on the results of colonoscopy, and that's what this is going to be about, basically. But uh, during the colonoscopy, uh, which involves sticking a camera on the end of a tube in a place where God never intended a camera on a tube to go, 
uh, they found a mass growing about 20 centimeters in uh, from the anus, about 3 centimeters big, um, which, as near as they can tell, was the source of all the blood and other things. And uh, they also found a polyp on the ascending colon, which is about as far as you can be from the anus and still be in the uh, large intestines, or the colon. And uh, both the mass and the polyp, when they sent them off to the lab, came back positive for adenocarcinoma. Uh, adenocarcinoma is... Um, basically a cancer of the mucus producing glands uh, which would explain why back when I first started having symptoms sometimes I'd have this mucusy slimy discharge from my anus. Uh, basically the glands became cancerous, uh, developed some polyps which over the course of about 10 years, that's how long it takes, had grown back to the intestinal wall and set up a cancer colony so to speak. So at any time in the last 10 years, had I had, a, had I had a colonoscopy, this possibly could have been uh, detected sooner. And it's also possible, however, that nothing would have been detectable until shortly before I started having the more blood in the stool. And even if I'd had the most observant doctors in the world, I would not have gotten, it wouldn't have been diagnosed any sooner. But the point is that uh, once they found it and sent it off to the lab and it came back positive for adenocarcinoma, um, that they ran more tests. They uh, ran CT scans. CT scans is like a super 3D x-ray and uh, uses something called contrast. And to do the contrast, you have to have an IV, which is why I've got these little things on the back of my hands where they've been hooking me up to IVs. Uh, they run you through once and then they pump some dye into your uh, veins and then they run it through again and the difference of the contrast between the two is how they uh, tell structures in the body and uh, so that found many many uh, lymph nodes part of my lymphatic system uh, many irregular lymph nodes and a few spots uh, three spots on my liver and several spots on each lung and they did multiple CTs I did a head MRI the only bright part I've got about this is when they did the MRI of my head my brain scan perfectly normal. I'm going to say that again because no one ever believes it. My brain is normal. So, and then they did a full body PET scan, which stands for positron emission tomography. But basically, uh, same as with a CT scan or an MRI, they injected stuff into my veins. And this was actually a radioactive marker that uh, produced positrons, which are the opposite of electrons. And when they traveled, when the positrons traveled through my body, they would uh, interact with electrons, uh, mutual annihilation, and that would produce a burst of gamma rays, and they used that to make a picture. And all these tests basically came back and told me the exact same thing, which was I had a mass in my colon, uh, several abnormal lymph nodes throughout my body, and uh, a few spots on my liver, several spots on my lungs. And uh, all that proved was that we were at stage four of the cancer. And apparently stage one is like cancer. And stage two, it like travels through the same organ. Uh, stage through three, it starts traveling to adjacent organs. And stage four, it goes to distant organs. And that means the, the uh, cancer has metastasized, which means parts of it have broken loose and have traveled through the uh, lymphatic or circulatory system, in this case apparently the lymphatic system, since so it's the lymph nodes, and have set up colonies, for lack of a better term, in other areas. So basically, uh, we've reached the point where a simple surgery, removing that big mass in my rectum, will not cure me. In fact, curing may be out of the, uh, out of, not possible at this point. It's more uh, treating. Um, and when I asked for numbers, you know, what's my survivability for the next five years? You know, what percentage of people, you know, live through this long enough to complain about it? What not? Basically, no one can tell me any numbers. No one can give me any advice because the, uh, the thing is, I'm at stage four and there is no stage five, just so you know. Uh, and, but I may have been stage four at year, for years because this is a slow growing cancer. It's slow progressing. It's a well differentiated carcinoma which means it spreads slowly so this has been spread spreading through my body for many years and so you know we've reached this point and we've discovered it but now we have to treat it and see what happens and they say until we run through a couple of courses of chemotherapy 
and see what effect, if any, this has, then we won't really know if this is treatable. Um, very, very, very best case scenario is, uh, say, a year of chemotherapy, uh, all the distant colonies uh, shrink or disappear. We go back and we remove the original tumor, or at least what we assume is the original tumor, because it's the largest of any we found at three centimeters. Everything else is about a centimeter, which is about as small as your tip of your pinky or uh, less than half an inch. Uh, but the main, the main uh, mass is three centimeters, which is over an inch. And uh, you can't see it here, but I'm kind of wringing my hands while I'm talking about this because this is very, very disturbing. Uh, but until we run a few courses of chemotherapy and then redo all these CTs and MRIs and PET scans uh, to see if it's made any changes, only then will they have some idea of whether or not this is treatable uh, whether or not this is curable and whether or not I'll be around in X number of years to keep complaining about it. Um, for those of you that I know personally that are hearing about this on a webcast or on a, a video log, I do apologize, but uh, this is not easy to talk about, and face-to-face -face it's even less easy to talk about. So I've been going person to person, you know, people who are important to me, and the fact that I've not talked to you yet does not mean you're not important to me. It just means I haven't gotten around to you. Uh, but I've been going person to person explaining all this, and it's reached the point where it is taking a lot out of me to talk to people. And so I thought if I do it once here on camera, then we can get it all past us and uh, get it explained to everybody who needs to know and we can move on to the next step which is possible treatment uh, I'm on a lot of pills um, but mostly for uh, mostly right now I'm on iron supplements because I'm losing a little blood in my stool and that's giving me a borderline case of anemia uh, I've not started the chemotherapy yet and I don't know how well this is going to show on the camera here but you can see a little uh, hole here and then you might see some uh, padding down here where it looks like I've got something taped to my chest. I do, but all that is for the next video. Uh, in the meantime, I just want to tell everybody that we, you know, I've been diagnosed with stage four colon cancer. They can't tell me, you know, what's going to happen next. It's just a matter of, you know, wait and see. And uh, we're going to fight this. We're not going to give up. We're not going to curl up and die. We are going to uh, fight this at least until we can see what type of. Uh, what type of chances we have. But uh, I figured uh, to keep this out of the regular channel and all the happy-go-lucky fun games videos that I normally do, I'm going to put this in its own playlist, the C, the C word, and therefore if you don't want to hear about this, you don't have to. You can just skip past those videos, go straight on to something else. Um, and uh, if you want to just tell me, you know, if you don't want to be subscribed to a channel of somebody's going to have occasional videos about cancer, just unsubscribe. You don't need to tell me that you're unsubscribing. You don't need to put in any video responses or any comments saying how I suck now that I've developed cancer. Um, I'm not going to tolerate any negativity about this because I've got enough negatives in my life as it is. So if you don't want to keep abreast of this, I've got 500 other videos that you can watch if all you want is fun and games and whatnot. Uh, if you do want to keep uh, keep up with this, then just uh, bookmark the C, the C word playlist or just check back from time to time for the new videos. So uh, I know that's a lot to dump on you at once, but I figured let's get this get this out and let everybody know and so we can move beyond it and get back to fun and games and happy times and whatnot. So I'm working on some new Minecraft videos. I'll have those uploaded by the time you see this. So uh, if you want fun and games, we'll have that. If you want more serious stuff, me keeping you up to date about my cancer, we'll have that too. Uh, it's Uncle Troy signing out. Please have a good night.